Welcome back to Women's Health Weekly. Uh, we're here broadcasting from New York City on YouTube with Dr. Carol Long Roche from Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, uh, who we're very excited to have. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, look for our podcast and our short videos that will come after this with some very, very specific topics that we're discussing. Okay, let's hit some of the questions that our awesome YouTube audience um, has asked us. Uh, Rosie, um, who is 24, um, is used the term she's devastated that her pap smear recently came back as ASCUS. And I know you're about to explain what ASCUS is, came back mm -hmm. as ASCUS and she has a high risk positive, not 16 or 18 HPV. Take me through that. What yeah, does that mean? So, what does all that mean? Um, I mean, that's, that's, she, she obviously has a technical, sounds like a technical understanding. Her doctor probably told her this. Yeah. Let's, let's take her through it. And her corollary question is, how long does it take for HPV to become ASCIS? And is that important? Yeah, you know, we think that, um, you know, the data that we have um, is more from how long it takes an abnormal pap smear to become invasive cervical cancer. And we do think that that period of time is probably pretty long, measured in terms of years. Um, and what that offers us is an opportunity to intervene. And I'm sorry that you're devastated, and and I I empathize with that. But I I would challenge you to try to think about it as a real opportunity to keep yourself healthy, um, and partner with your gynecologist to take this information that. Um, is scary and upsetting, but turn it into really the opportunity to stay well and prevent something that um, that could be much worse. Um, ASCIS stands for atypical squamous cells of undetermined signif clinical significance. And what that means is the cytologist, when they looked under the microscope, saw some changes. Um, and the changes, they couldn't quite be sure whether these changes were benign, like from inflammation, or whether these changes were from um, the start of some precancerous type changes. Um, everyone who has precancerous changes doesn't go on to develop cancer, and the pap smear is really how we ensure that um, by getting the information. Um, the next step after an abnormal pap smear is then to do a colposcopy, where um, the gynecologist uses basically a fancy microscope to look very closely at the cervix and look at the cells and to identify whether there's any visually concerning lesions. And then in many cases, take a little biopsy of tissue to then give to the pathologist to look for precancerous changes. Depending on the type of precancerous changes, we may just watch because many women, especially 24-year-old women, their bodies will actually heal those changes on their own. However, if the changes are severe, then it may be that an intervention is needed where a little bit of tissue is excised from the outside portion of the cervix, hopefully excising the abnormal cells and treating the problem. I want to get to another YouTube viewer question. JH asks if there's an HPV-16 history and the last few PAPs have been negative but ASCUS, any need to be concerned about that? If you are under regular care from your gynecologist and they are you know, aware of your history and they have your pap smears, there's very specific guidelines um, that every gynecologist has access to about you know, how to plan the next step, what the next pap should be, when it should be. So as long as your gynecologist has you within those guidelines, um, I would trust that you're getting proper care. In terms of the history of HPV-16, any history of HPV or HPV high risk or the highest, highest of the high risks, which are the 16 and 18, um, just means that that relationship with your gynecologist and that adherence to the pap smear guidelines is that much more important. Wouldn't be concerned so much, but the need for diligence is there because if an abnormality is found, it can be treated early and, and cervical cancer can be prevented. So JH is 41 and I, I don't think your answer would change. No, I think any woman, any woman with a history of any HPV or abnormal PAPs, again, it's just um, it just solidifies really the importance of regular follow-up and communication and um, and of course, um, you know, if you feel like you're having a symptom that's not being addressed, um, to really push forward and make sure that that's being, you know, evaluated properly. Uh, one more question from our 
uh, YouTube uh, viewers here. Okay, back to... Um, Oh, somebody just asked, what's the name of that? If you know the name of the mushroom ex extract, great. If not, no worries. We will, I'll post it. I'll post it later. It is, um, it's a hexose correlated um, mushroom supplement. And it, it, this is data driven. I don't know if the paper has been published, but um, if you, um, but we can get it out to people. And again, it's not something that I, have any stake in i i actually um really more focus on the other things but i think if people really want something to complement um the things that they're working with their gynecologist on this is something that can be done and the study that was done on it um uh showed no adverse effects from it it, it may not even be branded yet it may it may yeah i don't know tough, if it's it may even be hard branded. to get over you know in a in a health food yeah. store um, okay. um all right so my last Question for this part from a YouTube viewer. If you have HPV high risk positive, but not 16 or 18, mm -hmm. and the follow up colposcopy was completely normal, no abnormal cells, what happens next? Do you just monitor? There are very specific guidelines. Um, if, if the follow up is normal and, and there's no dysplasia identified, then you sort of channel right back into that surveillance um, algorithm. Um, and, and like I said, there's, there's very, very specific guidelines for every situation. And so depending on that um, person's age um, and their PAP history and sort of where they are, their gynecologist will recommend the next step, which in that case sounds like it would be another PAP with HPV testing at a certain interval, depending on the person's age. 